Hi and welcome back to this channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the differences and similarities that exist among the three repetition control structures that we talked about in the previous video. So I'm going to start by talking to you about four loops. Okay, so technically four loops are used by programmers to implement counter controlled loops in a program. And that is also the main reason why they are typically referred to in programming as counted or indexed for loops. So in reality, the for loop control structure functions the same way as the counter controlled while loop that uh, we show in a previous video that we did on this channel. So in order to prove that, I have written these two looping structures. So the first one is the for loop structure and then the second one is a while loop structure. And you will see that if I run these two portions of code or these two looping structures, we are going to get the very same result in our console. Let me run and as you can see here, so this result up here is for this for loop up here and then the result down here is for the while loop here. And as you can see, we are getting the very same result. So this is to explain what I was saying that a counter controlled while loop functions the same way as a for loop, okay? Because for loop is actually um, implemented to design counter controlled loops. So when designing a program, you always have a choice to either use a for loop or a counter controlled while loop. So typically when writing a program, if the number of repetition or iteration of the loop is known or determined in advance, programmers usually choose to use the for loop control structure, okay? Instead of using the while loop because I guess it's much more simple and easy. So then the while while loop is usually used by programmers when they cannot determine in advance the number of repetitions needed and maybe the repetition, there would not even be a repetition in the program. So when the iteration is not predetermined and it could be equal to zero, that's when they use while loop. And meanwhile, the do while loop is used when programmers cannot determine in advance the number of repetitions needed, but it must be at least one. So as I could show you that in the do while loop, the action statement always executes at least once uh, during the execution. So if you do not know the number of iterations in your program, but you know for sure that the loop must execute at least once, that's when you have to use the do while loop. All right. So one other key point that we need to take into consideration when dealing with uh, repetition control structures is that in programming, while loops and for loops are also called pretest loops, simply because they both have entry conditions. So that means that uh, the loop conditions are evaluated first before executing the body of the loop. And I think we talked about it in uh, the previous video. So these loops, which are the while loop and the for loop, might never execute or might never activate in a program, especially when the loop condition evaluates to false right at the entry point of your loop execution. So the do while loop, on the other end, is called a post-test loop because it has an exit condition. So it, that means that the body of the do while loop always executes at least once. And the loop condition in the do while loop is evaluated only after executing the body of the do while loop, okay? So we can consider uh, this example that I'm gonna write quickly on the screen here. So I will say int i like this, and I'm gonna write a while loop while i is less than 10 like this. Let me set this value to 10 like this. And then I will do system that out, that print line. Uh, let me see print i concatenation. Then the next statement will be i plus plus. Then here I will system that print line. So this is a while loop. So now I need to do a do while loop. I will say int i, I will say j, then like this. Now do do I will simply copy this and paste it down here, change this variable, and then I'm gonna while like this. So these two portions of code is to explain to you what I just talked to you a couple of minutes ago uh, about while loops being pre 
test loops and then do while loop being post test loops. And I was saying that in a while loop, the condition is executed first before the action statement. Meanwhile, in the do while loop, the action statements are executed first before the condition is executed. So you will see that if I run this program, the first portion of code, the first loop, which is a while loop, is going to return an empty result. Okay, nothing is going to show on the screen. So let me comment this one and then show you what I mean by that. Okay, I have commented and then if I run, you will see that I'm not getting any result in the screen uh, in the console simply because here the condition is evaluating to false right at the entry point of the execution of the while loop. And this is because here, as you can see, the value stored in I is 10. So 10 um, less than 10 would return false. All right. But I have used the very same elements for the do while loop. And you will see that if I run this do while loop, I'm going to get a very different result from the one we got for, uh, when we run the while loop. If I run like this, I'm going to get 10. Okay. So I'm getting 10 here simply because, okay, as you can see, the value stored in the loop control variable is 10. And since the action statement is evaluated first, so that's why we are getting the 10 here. And then when it reaches the loop condition, it's going to evaluate to false. And that's the very reason why this action statement is not evaluated again. Okay. So that's why we are only getting 10 in our console here. And you could also check that this second action statement also uh, executed simply by doing a system that out that print line to print out the value stored in the variable, uh, I think it's J, like this. You would see that I'm going to get 11 in the console. Okay, so I'm getting that 11 here, which is coming from this system and the other print line. So let me make sure that it comes on a different line. Okay, so that's it. The 10 is coming from this system that out that print line here, and the 11 is coming from uh, this second output statement system that out that print line J. So this is to show show us that this second action statement actually got executed. And because we are in a do while loop, the action statement is executed before the loop condition executes. Okay, guys, so that was it concerning repetition control structures. I hope this uh, video was informative and please do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Let's meet in the next one.